Hi, it's my favorite time of day, the time of day when I get to read a good book to you. Today we're going to read Thunder Cake by Patricia Polacco. She's one of my favorite authors. A lot of the books that she writes are about her childhood and this is one of them. She had a lot of problems reading when she was growing up and she overcame those and now she's an author and illustrator of many, many great books for kids. And I want you to pay attention to the illustrations in this book because they tell you a lot about the setting. The setting is important in a story and you probably know the setting is where and when it takes place. Look what she does with the illustrations in this book to keep you informed about what's going on in the setting. All right, thunder cake. Are any of you afraid of thunderstorms? Patricia Polacco was when she was your age. On sultry summer days at my grandma's farm in Michigan, the air gets damp and heavy. Storm clouds drift low over the fields. Birds fight, fly close to the ground. The clouds glow for an instant with a sharp crackling light, and then the roaring low tumbling sound of thunder makes the windows shudder in their panes. The sound used to scare me when I was little. I loved to go to grandma's house. Babushka, as I used to call my grandma, had come from Russia years before, but I feared Michigan's summer storms. I feared the sound of thunder more than anything. I always hid under the bed when the storm moved near the farmhouse. This is the story of how my grandma, my babushka, helped me overcome my fear of thunderstorms. So she called her grandma babushka. Pay attention to the setting and the illustrations. Grandma looked at the horizon, drew a deep breath and said, this is thunder cake bacon weather all right. Looks like a storm coming to me. Can you see the storm coming? Child, you come out from under that bed. It's only thunder you're hearing, my grandma said. The air was hot, heavy, and damp. A loud clap of thunder shook the house, rattled the windows, and made me grab her close. Steady, child, she cooed. Unless you let go of me, we won't be able to make a thunder cake today. Thunder cake, I stammered as I hugged her even closer. Don't pay attention to that old thunder, except to see how close the storm is getting. When you see the lightning, start counting real slow. When you hear the thunder, stop counting. That number is how many miles away the storm is. Understand, she asked. We need to know how far away the storm is so we have time to make the cake and get it into the oven before the storm comes or it won't be real thunder cake. Her eyes surveyed the black clouds away off in the distance. Then she strode into the kitchen. Her worn hands pulled a thick book from the shelf above the wood stove. Let's find that recipe, child, she crowed as she loving, lovingly fingered the grease-stained pages to a creased spot. Here it is, thunder cake. She carefully penned the ingredients on a piece of note paper. Now let's gather all the things we'll need, she exclaimed as she scurried toward the back door. We were by the barn door when a huge bolt of lightning flashed. I started counting like Grandma told me to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then the thunder roared. Ten miles. It's ten miles away, Grandma said as she looked at the sky. About an hour away, I'd say. You'll have to hurry, child. Gather them eggs careful like, she said. Eggs from mean old Nellie Peck hen. I was scared. I knew she would try to peck me. I'm here, she won't hurt you. Just get them eggs, Grandma said softly. The lightning flashed again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, I counted. Nine miles, Grandma reminded me. Milk was next, milk from old Kick Cow. As Grandma milked her, Kick Cow turned and looked mean right at me. I was scared. She looked so big. Zip 
went the lightning. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, I counted. Baroom went the thunder. Eight miles, child, Grandma croaked. Now we have to get chocolate and sugar and flour from the dry shed. Look at this setting. I was scared as we walked down the path from the farmhouse through the tangleweed woods to the dry shed. Suddenly the lightning slit the sky. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, I counted. Boom, ba-boom, crashed the thunder. It scared me a lot, but I kept walking with Grandma. Another jagged edge of lightning flashed as I crept into the dry shed. One, two, three, four, five, six, I counted. Crackle, crackle, boom, kaboom, the thunder bellowed. It was dark and I was scared. I'm here, child, Grandma said softly from the doorway. Hurry now, we haven't got much time. We've got everything but the secret ingredient. Three overripe tomatoes and some strawberries, Grandma whispered as she squinted at the list. I climbed up high on the trellis. The ground looked a long way down. I was scared. I'm here, child, she said. Her voice was steady and soft. You won't fall. I reached three luscious tomatoes while she picked strawberries. Lightning again. One, two, three, four, five, I counted. Kabang, boo, The thunder growled. We hurried back into the house and the warm kitchen and we measured the ingredients. I poured them into the mixing bowl while Grandma mixed. I churned butter for the frosting and melted chocolate. Finally, we poured the batter into the cake pans and put them into the oven together. Lightning lit the kitchen. I only counted to three and the thunder rumbled and crashed. Three miles away, Grandma said, and the cake is in the oven. We made it. We'll have a real thunder cake. I like how she puts these words of the thunder in capitals. It tells you how to say them when you're reading it. As we waited for the cake, Grandma looked out the window for a long time. Why, you aren't afraid of thunder. You're too brave, she said as she looked right at me. I'm not brave, Grandma, I said. I was under the bed, remember? But you got out from under it, she answered and you got eggs from mean old Nellie Peck Hen. You got milk from old Kick Cow. You went through Tangleweed Woods to the dry shed. You climbed the trellis in the backyard. From where I sit, only a very brave person could have done all them things. What do you think? Do you think she's brave? I thought and thought as the storm rumbled closer. She was right. I was brave. Brave people can't be afraid of a sound child, she said, as we spread out the tablecloth and set the table. When we were done, we hurried into the kitchen to take the cake out of the oven. After the cake had cooled, we frosted it. Just then the lightning flashed, and this time it lit the whole sky. Even before the last flash had faded, the thunder rolled, boomed, crashed, and barroomed just above us. The storm was here. Perfect, Grandma cooed, just perfect. She beamed as she added the last strawberry to the glistening chocolate frosting on top of our thunder cake. As rain poured down on our roof, Grandma cut a wedge for each of us. She poured us steaming cups of tea from the samovar. When the thunder roared above us so hard it shook the windows and rattled the dishes in the cupboards, we just smiled and ate our thunder cake. From that time on, I never feared the voice of thunder again. Look at her face. Does she look afraid? She's laughing. 
And on this page, there's the actual recipe for her grandma's thunder cake. It's strange that it has tomatoes in it. You wouldn't think of tomatoes in a cake, would you? I bet it's good, though. Maybe you could make a thunder cake the next time there's a thunderstorm where you live. I know we've been having thunderstorms where I live lately. Maybe I'll try out the recipe. All right. I will see you next time. Bye, Emma.